Okay, so uh, as with any of my videos, there's always a chance that there's a trigger warning needed, um, but I try and put that in the subject box. Um, and, and yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm trying. So let's talk about court. Um, I'm gonna try and keep the flies off of me and not go insane because they tickle when they walk all over me. Rats. Um, so as far as this case goes with my son, we've had technically four court appearances, one of which um, he didn't need to be in, um, which he got very upset about considering it revolved around him uh, and the idea of him leaving the country. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's only involving him. It doesn't actually involve him. But the three that we have dealt with, um, the first one was with the family judge. And um, he was nervous about it. He was already in a panic attack by the time we got in the car. And we had to wake up early to be able to get there because it's, you know, a decent amount of time away. Plus, there's always, you know, traffic. And there's always construction on the road. So, um... So we get there and he's already, you know, in a mild panic and he's stressing and stuff like that and he doesn't want to see his father. Um, he's still upset over, and this was June last year, um, still upset over how everything went, um, still scared about speaking his truth and refusing to go home or back to my ex. And we get in there um, and it's complicated to figure out where we're supposed to go in the building. The building's hotter than it should be because it's an old building. It's been repurposed into a judicial system. Hello, airplane of some sort. And uh, so we meet his lawyer. Um, I don't remember if I had a lawyer at that point yet, but I think there was a translator, which didn't really do me much good. Um, my spoken French is decent enough that I can comprehend enough to get confused and lost and realize that I didn't understand anything that was being said actually. Um, my spoken French is really good in terms of specific patterns, uh, specific subjects, and specific types of word patterns like, um, you know, swearing. I I'm getting better at swearing. Um, you know, but, uh, but the political side, the, the bourgeois side, or the Moliere side, I don't have. Um, and so that's kind of complicated. But he gets in there, and we're all talking, and it, we take turns and stuff like that. And at one point, it's his, his father's lawyer's turn to speak. And she just launches into him as if he's a grown adult, as if he's committed multiple crimes before, um, and she's just being brutal. And at the time, he had just turned 15. Um, and it's just, that's, that's just no way that you, you treat a child. Um, especially a child who had su suicidal ideation since the age of 12, um, who has been cutting, who has been, you know, mild attempts. Um, and so that didn't go very well. Um, and at the end of it, he ended up having a massive panic attack which was the lightest of the ones that he's had so far, but at the time it was more intense than anything else he's had before. Um, and so his lawyer, uh, who's a lovely lady who speaks English, um, and she understands the Anglophone society better than a lot of the French people do that are in, involved in the, in this, in the proceedings, um, which makes a difference because it's a different culture. Even if England is not the same culture as America, it shares a lot of commonalities. And, um, being in France, it's kind of like being in the Twilight Zone. It's a lot of commonalities, but it's slightly different. Um, and then we're in the hallway after it all, and he's having a panic attack. Um, she's not sure what to do. I'm calming him down because uh, I know how to read him. I know how to get him to breathe. I know how to unhunch him so that he stands up straight, so that he gets more oxygen, uh, so that he starts to feel more confident and things like that. Then the next court appearance was an appeals to that first appearance. In between those two, uh, my ex was doing something almost every week to, like, if not every week, then every other week to reset any healing that he was doing on his own. And he was having complications with being at the, um, the middle school. Um, he ended up not going to school a lot because he was just so, so stressed um, because it's, you know, a good 30 minutes away. 
Um, it made it difficult to get there by car. The car didn't always work and it was my son driving and my, my son has hypersomnia. Uh, so it's difficult for him to wake up or it's difficult for him to go to sleep uh, or get any rest from the sleep, which I identify with because I had 10 years of chronic fatigue syndrome uh, back in the States. And so I, I get it and I get how detrimental it can be and how difficult it can be to function. And the medication that he was on just didn't do anything. Um, so that made it complicated. Then he had an issue with a French teacher who was being really nasty, targeting him out specifically, um, but making everyone's life you know, miserable. And I don't tolerate adults that specifically target children. Um, so it was all kinds of high anxiety, um, and my ex was playing all kinds of games, getting him prepared for, you know, getting into the high school and trying to weasel his way into the information that was going on. Um, and it was just all kinds of complicated stuff and, and it just, he wasn't being respectful and he was constantly trying to pit the boys against each other. Um, so either it was my ex trying to pit, um, my 21 year old and my 16 year old against my oldest and against me. Uh, or it was him, uh, if my, um, if my 21 year old wasn't around, um, saying things that would pit my 16 year old against him. Um, and it was just, it was such sly, subtle digs. And I mean, the most abusive one that I, I remember hearing about, uh, as the boys told me was that when my 20 or when my oldest wasn't around, um, they, they, uh, that my ex told the, my middle one and my youngest that they didn't have to think of him as a real brother. And it's like, okay, only my youngest is biologically related to my ex-husband. So you're telling one that's not related to you at all, who's your stepchild that, you know, you adopted and stuff. Um, and then you abused under your care, um, that he doesn't have to think of his half brother because all of my kids have different fathers because there's a huge age gap. I mean, one's 25, one's 21, um, and the youngest is 16. Uh, different points in my life. And, um, and it's just like you're telling them that they don't have to think of each other as family. Hmm. Which is also hypocritical considering the fact that my oldest has two older siblings, or no, my ex has two older siblings who are from his father's previous marriage. So that's a bit hypocritical. Um, but it was, it was stuff like that. It was petty, but it's psychological add-ons. You know, the more you put weight onto something, the, the more intense it gets, the heavier it gets, and the more it causes psychological damage and things you got to heal from. And it's just, it's BS. <laughs> I love the fact that my ex would say that I was a bad cook. Except for the fact that, you know, he would tell the boys that I was a bad cook. Except prior to that, he'd been, you know, telling them to learn how to cook from me because I actually do cook very well. Um, not cookies. No, I don't do cookies. Cookies burn. I'm sw I swear like hazmat probably has me on speed dial if I was even thinking of you know making cookies in the States because they burn. And I can follow the recipe perfectly. I can try using different ovens, techniques, whatever. No, they burn. Cheesecake? I do a nice cheesecake. Um, usually, if I'm not too tired and I'm not having a bad day. Um, but, but yeah, it was just all kinds of, of petty stuff that adds up um, and my ex tried doing all kinds of other things to get my son's attention um, between each of the court dates um, trying to you know gain back control trying to uh, figure out what it was that I wasn't saying what information I wasn't feeding him things like that and it would just keep resetting uh, my son's healing every time his father reached out to him and or any time that he was you know forced to be alone with him so by the time the second court date showed up, uh, that was the appeals court several months later um, with my ex appealing the fact that my son had been put in my care. Um, and that didn't go well. Um, I had a different interpreter this time. Um, now the proceeding usually goes with my youngest going into the courtroom alone with the judge and his lawyer you know, answering whatever questions. The problem is he doesn't know what questions to answer. He does because they, they, they leave it as an open-ended question. What do you have to say? You know, this, that, and the other thing. Um, and, and he just doesn't know. It's, it, he's not comfortable. He doesn't feel safe. He doesn't have, you know, someone to support him. Um, you know, even if it's like a support dog or, or whatever. His lawyer is good, but she's still a stranger. 
Um, and it, it builds up some of his confidence to be there, but not enough to, to speak his truth. And since he didn't have um, enough communication time with his father, uh, he didn't build up his communication skills. He built up his academic skills. So on paper, on text, he's great. Um, but the his spelling is atrocious. His handwriting is atrocious. <laughs> but but you know, but the the communication side, uh, especially sp expressing his emotions, that comes from me, and that comes from the anglophone side. And so. Um, so he's just not, he's not comfortable. He doesn't know what the judge wants to hear. And it's not a question of placating the judge and feeding the judge information. It's more about give me some topics, give me some categories, and, and that'll jog memories and I can pull the information and give you something that you'll consider as appropriate. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's complicated doing that as an adult, um, you know, when you're already in a mild panic attack. But then to be a child um, and to have already had one bad experience with the court, um, while that was going on, we were in the hallway talking with my lawyer at that time and the, um, the interpreter who was this little old French lady, um, probably younger than I'm making her sound, but older than I am. And, uh, so maybe 50s, 60s. And, um, but she has that little old lady feel, um, that granny feel. And uh, so we're, we're trying to explain to her the severity of the situation, letting her know that it is... And I keep looking off to the side, um, even though I know that I know the camera's over there. Um, but trying to explain the severity of the situation of why he isn't in school uh, at the high school, um, that he tried, uh, that it was just too too stressful, too traumatic, um, that there was too much risk of him hurting himself or hurting others, uh, and she didn't take it seriously. And between those two court appearances, my son did try. He tried to go to the scouts, uh, which he's a member of here. And he tried to do the two-week vacation there, um, and that didn't go well. He nearly jumped off a cliff. Um, he cut himself instead to keep him from doing that. And he had two surveillance, uh, two, two other troop leader kind of things nearby. Um, and he was having a very hard time. It was too hot because um, he was down in the south of France. The fires were going on, so there was constant smoke. He, he had his nose bleeding from it. He was pushing himself too hard, which I warned them of all of this ahead of time. Um, and they had known since at least December that he had suicidal ideation. So how they handled it, it was not professional. Um, it was very badly handled. And then they tried to dumb it down. And they actually, I found out in the most recent court appearance, they never said anything about that to the judge. Not surprised. Um, but... So we're, we're in the hallway, we're telling the interpreter what has happened, how severe it is, how real it is. And I'm getting the feeling, but I'm hoping it's just an assumption. I, I'm hoping that it's, you know, not real and stuff like that. But I'm getting the feeling that it's going in one ear and not out the other, not tickling anything in between. And I was right, unfortunately. Um, when we get into the courtroom, we've got my lawyer and my 16-year-old's lawyer over here my ex and his lawyer over there, someone over there, the interpreter next to me, and my youngest in the corner as far away from everyone as possible. It's like, okay. And he's already in a state of panic. Um, and then he got ramped up into a state of panic by, by being alone with the judge and the, uh, the lawyer. Um, so, so I can tell he's not well. But, you know, I'm keeping an eye on it, you know, um, metaphorically speaking, because I can hear behind me, I, I'm keeping an awareness. I'm trying to keep my calm. I'm trying to understand what's going on. The interpreter's trying to talk. The interpreter's trying to, you know, do whatever. And when it gets to be my turn to speak, uh, I say something, and she just says whatever whatever it is that she wanted to say. It had nothing to do with what... And I'm like, no, that is not what I said. That had nothing to do with what I said. Your job is to, to, to translate what it is that I'm saying to the judge, not to make stuff up. Okay, so that started a little problem. And then, um, and so we skipped my turn to speak. And then, you know, it was my ex's turn to say stuff and, and his lawyer and stuff like that. And both me and my son had an issue with what was being said. So we calmly raised our hand, you know, not, not necessarily waiting to be called upon or anything like that, just to be acknowledged. And the judge completely ignored me, ran, just like looks at my son, ramps right into him, amps up his anxiety, amps up his panic attack to, to huge numbers, and he's just bitching at him. 
And it's like, excuse you? That's not professional at all. That's not biased. That's not neutral. What the fuck? Okay, but the room goes quiet. My son's reacting to it, but he's, he's cuddled up, you know, like in, in this corner. We're all looking at him. I'm watching to figure out what's going to happen next. Can he calm himself down? Um, do I need to step in? But the interpreter gets up, runs over to his side, cuddles right into him, acting like a maternal grandmother, which triggered him more. And my son is curling up his hand. Um, and, and I realize, you know, just her moving was enough time for me to go, okay, I'm going to have to get up. I'm going to have to do something. So I get up. And I follow quickly behind. I put my fa hand in her face, and I, you know, in, in, you know, to get her to out. And I'm just calmly talking to him. I'm crouched down, you know. I'm ignoring her, and and I'm, you know, getting him to focus back on me to, to, you know, like, you know, breathe it out, to stand up. Let's go. Let's, you know, and, you know, and everyone is, is like, you could hear a pin drop. Um, we were able to get him escorted out. He was able to sit in the hallway with his older brother, and. Um, and everything proceeded on until we were done. Um, and I get the fact that to an extent, there is some doubt in the court's eyes that they need to see it happen and stuff like that. But you do not, that was a really piss poor way to trigger somebody. That was, that was dangerous. I mean, he was like literally this close from throat punching the little old lady in the neck. And had he done that, uh, any kind of, of, of attack to the neck can do serious damage. Had she hit her head on the bench and stuff like that, could have done more damage, she probably would have died. Um, all because of one grown ass adult deciding he was going to play God, that he was going to have an ego power trip. Whether he was intending to see if it was real or not doesn't matter. Um, I'm noticing that arrogance and that ego and that lack of neutrality playing out every time and it keeps getting more intense. So we're freaked out by the time um, the next one uh, rolls around. And I'm already at 17 minutes. All right, this is going to take about an hour to upload, so I'm going to try and do a second one. So we'll, we'll talk about that in the next one. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs>